Um, so let's see, Lululemon, I mean, for me, I don't do yoga. I mean, I, I do it occasionally, I guess, but I'm not a yogi. And I've never shopped at Lululemon. My impression is it's very expensive. If I'm struggling, if, you know, like uh, consumer credit card debt is, as far as I understand, up massively. If people have a lot of debt and maybe we get into a recession, maybe people start to lose their jobs, they're not going to be looking to buy uh, fancy yoga pants. They're going to be looking to pay those their, off their debt and, you know, putting food on the table at, at least, not getting... Uh, expensive yoga pants. So for me, like just from like a fundamental standpoint, I don't really see the appeal in Lululemon. I feel like though, let's see, when was this? Um, this 2022. I feel like pandemic, you know, March 2020. That to me, I wasn't too involved in the market then, but that would have been a better time to really um, jump into something like Lululemon because people are going to be at home. They want to be comfortable and, you know, uh, getting some, uh, doing some yoga and stuff at home. Um, so I, I would view that as a better like dip buying opportunity, but maybe with that being said, maybe there is a level that would correspond with that low. Maybe we're testing it now. And so let's see. Um, I will probably just have to go from the low here, 47.26, hit on June 2nd of 2017. And then I'm just going to connect that with the low uh, from the COVID crash. And that's uh, 47.26. I'm probably just going to have to adjust that. The one over here is the low 128.85. So I got to remember that 128.85. And then here, this is 47.26. So I'm just going to adjust that, lock it into place, and doing this blind, have no idea where it's going to line up. Maybe it intersects with the bottom that we saw. Nope, it hasn't. And so that makes me think this is probably going lower. That also, a retest, I mean, based on where price currently is, the current date, that would correspond with a 100% retracement, pulling back to $252.51, which was the low hit on May 27th. And so I could see a price pulling back to 250. And so from current price, that's a, um, is that like a 15% drop in price approximately? Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, like 18%, I think. Uh, and so I could see, I could see it coming down 20% more. Um, it did fill this, I guess, was there a gap there? No, that's the weekly time frame. So let's see. Yeah, there's a gap to the upside there that corresponds to this gap over here. I think it's pretty interesting. I think there will be a lot of resistance around 321. So what I could actually see is maybe a bounce to test 321.25, filling that gap, uh, which, you know, this it could actually be a little bit higher than that. The low or the close here was 322.98. Um, and then, but just above that, there's this bottom here that was support will be acting as resistance moving forward. I could see there being a bounce, but it probably being a dead cat bounce and switching back over to the weekly time frame, I could see price coming down to this uptrend because, you know, it had acted as prior support over here and following the COVID crash. And so that to me just seems like a magnet. And so, you know, maybe... Maybe it does go up, looking back over at the daily time frame. Maybe it does go back up, fill this gap. Maybe it does go back up and fill this gap. But I don't necessarily see that much pulling it up that way because I don't know that it's necessarily found a bottom. And I think that pulling down to at least like 285 corresponding with the lows over here, I could see that happening. Um, maybe actually though, I mean, because if I draw support, from these lows, you know, we're below it. And actually, this is, I think, a pretty cool thing right here. Uh, we, I'm just going to draw these to the lows. Just, I like to be exact. So that one's 251.51. And then the low over here, just making sure that's still lined up. Yeah, 251.51. And then here, the low is 286.58. So I'm just going to adjust that to... Wait, crap. That's uh, two, the low 
58, okay. 256, 88, I think I got that right. And then this is 251.51. I'm just gonna make sure, I think I, 58, not 88, dang it. All right, so I'm just gonna make this just right to the penny, lock that into place. And do we see, did that act as anything significant over here? Pretty cool, it acted as support here. We didn't get any closes below it at this point. That acted as a nice little bounce, getting a bounce up 10%, not a bad swing trade. But then here it broke that level. And so what I see is not only do you have this gap here that, you know, maybe people were buying here expecting it to bounce because there was this, you know, high here before this gap potentially acting as support. Maybe people buy here by the dip and then it gaps down. And so that blue line I view as a level of resistance. Just above that, you have the lows here, uh, which were 230, 230, 61, or sorry, 330, 61. That's gonna be acting as resistance. You have this uptrend above it, whatever level that would be. And then if I throw up the volume profile, you do start to see corresponding with right around, you know, getting above that uh, uptrend, you have volume start to pick up that is, going to be acting as resistance. So I feel like there are a number of levels to the upside that are gonna keep this price down. And so I feel like the odds are more in favor of it coming down to test this uptrend, which has acted as historical support on the weekly time frame before getting back up to these levels. So that's my argument. Um, and you know, if I were to, if I were to be forced into a position, whether long or short with Lulu, I would, I would prefer to be forced into a short position. But if I could choose between long, short, or out of it, I would choose to be out of it because maybe it is bouncing here. This is the uh, volume low, volume average low. This dashed line here did get some bounces over here. So, you know, maybe it did bounce at support. But if we do look at, you know, how it's trading after that bounce, I mean, we didn't really get much of a bounce. We saw more volume when it gapped down than when it moved up 6%. And then after that, it got re got rejected. It couldn't even make it up to fill that gap. So maybe it's, you know, pulling back to, you know, wind up and then lift off, break through that gap. But I, I just feel like there's, like from a more long-term perspective, there's just too much pulling it to this line in my opinion. And let's see, you know, we've always, yeah, just, I can draw so many lines on this. Uh, this is a really cool chart. Unfortunately, the last Lulu video that I put out, the only Lulu video that I put out did not get many views. So I'm probably not going to do another video on it. But yeah, I mean, I think this is pretty cool. So this is 2620 was the high before that it was the, um, yeah, COVID drop. So that was the high at the end of February, 2020, uh, 2620, right there, 26,200, however you wanna do it. Look, this super cool. That served as support here during this pullback in 2021, served as you know double bottom here, and then started moving up higher. Look, I mean, I view that by the end of the year, 2024, in December, price will be around $266. Maybe it doesn't, and maybe before then it dips down to 250. So I, I am more in the favor of this being bearish. Looking at this on the weekly time frame, big down moves with a lot of volume traded during those down moves. Consolidation here with that going flat. And that to me, as far as I understand, whether, whether it's a flag going to the upside, bullish or bearish to the downside, if you get a, a big move and then volume flattens, that means at when there's consolidation, that means it's more than likely to continue. Because you saw a bounce here, but volume didn't really go up. It's kind of flat, and so it's gonna move down. And then when it does move down more, you get volume increase, volume starts to taper out, flatten just like it did here when it's consolidating. I think it's going down to 266 at least. So I made my case, and I'm, I'm gonna rest it there. Hopefully that was helpful. Cool chart.